there's no prizes for guessing who the two most popular tennis players are in Asia right now. The world number one and two are treated like kings in China, and with 22 Grand Slam crowns between them, it's easy to see why. No, it's fantastic to see that. You, you don't get to experience, you know, obviously that every part of the world has a different culture and uh, that you, that you uh, experience. So, um, you know, Chinese tennis fans are definitely one of the best fans in the world. You know, they are so loyal, they're so dedicated to their players, favorite players. They wait in front of them, in, 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 uh, for them in front of the hotels with the flags and with different presents. So, it's, uh, I'm really glad to play here. But there is serious business to attend to this week and beyond. Both players are battling it out to finish the season as the world number one. Last year, Novak Djokovic took the year-end crown, but Federer is the current number one and has already made history in Shanghai this week. Victory for Federer. And of course, that guarantees him a 300th week as world number one. Federer missed the Asian swing last year due to fatigue, but has played some of his best tennis this year. Yeah, I mean, look, last year I think it was also again a very long year, and then sometimes it's just good to have sort of six weeks in a row where you can really rest for two weeks, really prepare well. This year has been a year where I play, and I don't do that many build-ups, so next year I'll have to do some more build-ups, but this year I decided to play tournaments, and I hope it's going to pay off. It has. I became world number one, I won Wimbledon, I got a, uh, an Olympic medal, so it's been a very successful um, year for me, but I have to make sure I do remind myself that the long term is also very important because I want to stay in the sport as long as I can, plus I want to be successful. Djokovic too is feeling fresh this year, and after winning his third consecutive Beijing crown in October, is ending the year in great form. And he finishes in fine style. A comfortable win. Only took him 53 minutes. Well, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling better than I felt uh, this time of year in, uh, you know, uh, 2011. Um, I had an injury after Davis Cup uh, 2011 that kept me away from the tour for almost two months, and I didn't really recover till the end of the season. So that's a positive, you know, now to be able to feel fit after a relatively long year and it's, it's still very encouraging uh, prior to the, to the next challenge. Federer has finished the year as world number one four times before and knows it won't be easy to do so again. So there's a bit of pressure on, on everyone involved here because it's the, the year end, everybody's pushing to get to the World Tour Finals, everybody wants to finish the year strong and it's already been a very long year. This is a far away place to travel to for players and, uh, and then on the back of that you have the whole indoor season in which you want to also finish well if you're an indoor player and I am one of those guys and I had a great great spell at the beginning of this year also at the end of last year and I hope I can keep it up. Djokovic is currently world number two but has more points and more victories than Federer in 2012 and is hopeful he can end the year on a high. I'm trying to to keep my body fit obviously mentally I'm always motivated I have a uh, objective to get back to the number one of the world and uh, I'm, I'm fighting for that every match matters and uh, you know there's still a few few big big ones to come and then obviously London season finale that uh, maybe can can maybe can be a decider but uh, but we'll see you know I try to to take it step by step whoever finishes his number one 2012 has been a vintage year for tennis the first time since 2003 the four Grand Slams were won by four different players. So it has been a very nice season, I think, for tennis uh, overall. Um, um, for me, no surprise that Andy Murray finally won his first Grand Slam. It was obviously an amazing victory for him as well at the Olympic Games. Um, I think Novak sort of um, has become a little bit of the benchmark on, on hard courts, particularly with the season he had last year. And Rafa obviously is sort of the benchmark on clay. Uh, so sort of everyone got his major he was hoping for, I guess, in some ways. And uh, it's been a good season, now an exciting finish for world number one. And uh, I hope I can finish at the top, but uh, first I'd like to just play good tennis here in Shanghai. That's the main goal, but it's been a really, really exciting season for tennis, I do believe, yes.